Today, whilst I'm speaking, if you are to be honest with yourself, you will see certain seasons where some anointings would have come upon your life if only you were determined. You heard about a meeting that was happening and it was so close to you, but the discipline to get up and wait there and you thought by next week you will meet that man. Then you heard the man is now dead. How many of you had an opportunity to see Reinhard Bonke? You said one day. How many of you had an opportunity to pursue certain mantles, certain graces, and you gave all kinds of flimsy excuses? How many of you had the opportunity to go for certain trainings that will cause you to rise? You didn't know that there was an age restriction. You said any year, after three years, now when you were ready, they said you are too old for it. Listen, let me tell you. The, one of the greatest manifestation of wisdom in your life is to know that every time does not fit for everything. When you buy a product, there's something they write at the bottom or at the side of it, best before. Everybody say best before. One more time, say best before. That means to get the most of this product, this is the time period you are allowed to consume this product. If you attempt to consume this product outside of this time range, it is at your, you are at risk. You will not get the best and you will not get the most. Hallelujah. I know that at any period is, is better late than never. But do you know someone who gets born again at 15 years and another person who gets born again at 60 years do not tell me they have the same advantage. In Christ they do. But one person has the luxury and the advantage of time. Are we together now? The 60 year old man, by the time you say you want to lock yourself for three days, your child's school fees issue will bring you out of that fasting period. Am I right on that? The young man can afford to stretch that much because he still has the privilege most likely of being under his parents. Prophetic timings are very, very important. Many of us have missed seasons. Many of us have missed moments. Many of us have missed mantles and graces. Many of us have missed prophetic connections that would have served as a leverage for us. Thou shall arise and have mercy. You see why mercy is in the equation? Because without mercy, that, that the issue of maximizing time cannot be possible. Time. Time. Read your Bible and watch people who missed out on prophetic moments. Prophetic moments. The woman at the well, that was a Kairos moment. She did not waste it at all. The madman in Gadara, that was a Kairos moment. He did not waste it at all. Unfortunately, there were people who were around Jesus' crusade. They ate bread, they watched miracles, but they were never transformed. Because to them, it was like every other day. Woe betides the student who gets up and finds out that tomorrow is Wayek and he's not been reading. Now you see, the way Kairos and Kronos works is, listen, Kronos is the gift God gives you to prepare for Kairos. That means every day counts. Your maximizing opportune moments is a product of your preparedness. Are we together now? The day that God will line up your destiny help as man of God and now give you the mic and you have the opportunity to preach or pray and that now opens a new door to your ministry. That manifestation will not just happen that day. It will be a summation of years and months of preparedness. Am I right on that? I think it was BJ Sachs when I, I, we were in the office and he was, he was the one pastor, he was ministering. And I nodded my head, I said, oh, this gentleman is so anointed. He, I mean, I was, I was watching how excellent they were. Now, you will say he's lucky or you will say it's God's grace. That is the language of mediocre and respectfully speaking, very foolish people who do not understand that what happens, God can open a door now. Someone can see this gentleman and say, you know what, come. There is somebody I want to introduce you to and that becomes a new season. Whereas someone who has been praying and fasting does not know. Listen, according to the law of time and chance, everybody on earth must have a Kairos moment. 
it is not a prayer point in God's justice system he programmed it that provided you are alive based on the law of time and chance he said time and chance happened to them all that means one day your destiny helper will pass you one day the mantle you are looking for will pass you whether you have trained yourself to discern it or not will mean you continuing in that realm or rising to a higher realm man of god you are trusting that god will announce you as a worshiper are you preparing for that kairos moment moving around with your invitation card is nonsense that's not how to prepare for kairos show me the songs you have written that you trust god will grant you to sing to the nations show me your consecration and your prayer and your fasting show me the rehearsals show me the discipline of waking up in the morning show me what you are learning about relationships show me what you are learning about leadership and management show me the them you are following who through faith and patience and i will tell you you are maximizing that season listen wishing for the day of opportunity is a waste of your time it will come preparing for it is how to maximize it hallelujah am i right on that so a young man is in the prison and he even refuses to bother about himself do you know why because he knew that with time, one day an opportunity will come for him to vindicate himself. And rather than bothering about himself, he was studying the countenance of his fellow prisoners. The man called Joseph. And he said, wine presser, you don't seem happy. Baker, you don't seem happy. Both of them said, we've had dreams. An opportunity to file his gift. An opportunity to refine his gift. He said, tell me your dreams for free at no charge. Talk to me. And they began to speak. You do not learn when you stand before kings. You learn in the wilderness. The presence of kings is not the place for rehearsal. It is the place for manifestation. Unfortunately, there are many people who keep praying and wishing, Oh God, bring the kings who will lift me. When they come, you are, when you do trial and error, you recycle seasons of pain. The stage is not for learners. The wilderness is for learners. Everybody God trains, he takes to the wilderness. John the Baptist, Moses, even Jesus. The stage is a testament of mastery. That you have worked with your chronos and you have built yourself. If you understand what I'm teaching you tonight, listen to me. It will be impossible for you to not arise. Man of God, moving around with your CV and saying, oh, which, who is the senator now? Who is the house member now? It may not be a wise thing. Go and file yourself. Those who are running after greatness, listen to me. Those who are running after greatness, chasing it around, will never find it. Because that greatness is looking for certain kind of people. Become that person that greatness is looking for. Hallelujah. So the lady is quietly somewhere preparing, knowing that one day God has put the spirit of worship within my spirit and the nations will hear me sing. I don't have any human connection, but one thing I know is that there is a Kairos moment. I will use my chronos every day, the seconds, the hour, the minute, while other people are gossiping, backbiting, ill-wishing those who are manifesting. There is a young lady preparing and saying, Lord, I know you have called me to sing your praises to the nations. I may not have an uncle, a father a mother but you be my witness as i train while others are sleeping she's maximizing chronos writing songs praying in the spirit fasting building herself going for trainings if need be i assure you by god's integrity you are watching a champion forming because one day someone will just say we're about to round up I hear you sing. Leave that one. The connection is God's own ministry. It's none of your business how it will happen. Are we together? Young lady, come. It looks like a coincidence, but you just called someone who has been training for one year and that lady will hold that mic in five minutes and you see God will position all her destiny helpers. Someone hears her and said, I just had something I've been looking for. What did you say your name is? 
her limitations no longer become an issue see me tomorrow and you see that lady in one church you see that lady in one program and in two three four days god leaves and people say you were so lucky no 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 so let me use this dear man bj sax again i don't play the saxophone but trust me i know that that thing is not very it's not easy you try it i can borrow it from him and give you now as anointed as you are you blow that thing and the first thing that will happen you need to see a doctor because there is a skill i've watched my dear friend and brother pastor not play the trumpet and sometimes i'm like this man you play that thing your cheeks you know how someone who has moms there's something called moms where your cheeks just becomes enlarged there is a skill you see when you watch masters manifest you are seeing a testament of the wise use of their chronos it is so effortless you will be mistaken to think the bible says he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully man of god the stage is not where you come and quote wrong verses and say things you did not study and say um, i know i researched it but i'm not sure go back to the wilderness the wilderness is the place of training use the stones as your audience use nature as your audience file yourself you are preparing based on the law of time and chance i assure you by the integrity of god your day will come the kairos moment will come Someone will call you and say, help us wrap up this prayer. Five minutes. All that you will say in that meeting is, let us pray. That's the beginning of your manifestation. Someone will say, who is this brother? Next week, you will be the one to lead opening prayer. Someone will say, be the head of the prayer group. And then before you know it, after three years, here is a great man of God. Again, the language of mediocres. He is so lucky. businessman i'm into real estate is that true what and what do you know about real estate i have one land my elder brother gave me to sell that is not real estate nobody will call you that way go back and settle down avoid listen i'm speaking to you from my heart run away from premature manifestation use your days don't lobby for visibility go back to the back side of the mountain it is god who brings men from the back to the front there is a law the bible says when you enter a house sit at the back it's a principle sit at the back let your competence Hallelujah. Thank you. Are we together? Let your competence mixed with timing bring you to the front. But if you decide to come and sit in the front, because you know those who are sitting in the front, sooner or later your lack of preparedness will take you to the back and that in shame. And you see, human beings are very unforgiving. When you waste your Kairos moment, they mark you as a failure. Even when you train yourself, it will take grace for you to be elevated. Is someone listening? So whether you are a preacher, whether you are a businessman, I bring you a message that the dealings of God with men, please listen. It looks like certain people seem to be exceptional. No, the same Lord is rich unto all. The difference is while others are discussing greatness, while others are wishing greatness, coveting greatness in ignorance, there are others who know that life is an interplay between Kronos and Kairos. Apostle, why are my songs not getting to the nations? I have an answer for you. Show me what you are doing with your chronos. When you wake up in the morning and give God five minutes, give your destiny 10 minutes, give the most valuable people in your life 15 minutes, then give mundane things the whole day. How do you become a champion that way? There is no superstition with God. Do not forget that righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne because of systems of advantage like favor listen carefully mercy many believers become lazy and irresponsible as to maximizing these seasons they magically believe that just because they are saved they are born again 
God will veto these principles and suddenly make them emerge. No, sir. No, sir. Apostle, there's an attack on my life. I'm a tailor and uh, the people, I know that I can sew for anybody. <clears throat> So who has called you now? Nobody, all right? What are you doing now? Recycling your current level or improving to a point that the day one king calls you, all his circle of friends, you become their tailor, all of them together. Can I tell you? I want you to make a vow that you will never enter the palace and have to be sent out again. Joseph made that commitment. In his pain, he did not allow offense to destroy him. He was building himself. Something tells me I am the prime minister. There's no way I can prove it. But I know. And he kept preparing. The Bible says, I love the Lord. He now says that Pharaoh had a dream. He had a dream and God shut the heavens over all the sorcerers. Nobody could see and know. And then the wine presser said, I remember my wrong this day. There was such and such a man. And they said, go and bring him. Your Bible says, and the king sent for Joseph. And they brought him out of his dungeon. Am I right on that? And when they brought him out, when he stood before Pharaoh, he shaved himself with the confidence of one who was ready for Kairos. Pharaoh, tell me your dream. God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Look at that kind of confidence. And Pharaoh began to give all his dream. And I can imagine Joseph with quietness watching. And all the necromancers with their pride. Hoping that he would say, I'm sorry, I, I don't know the answer. Joseph laughed. He said, I found the answer. All your dreams, whether they are cows or wheat, they all mean the same thing. Seven years. And then when he said everything, he said, let me give you a further solution. Let the king find a man. Another way of saying, I dare you to search if you will get somebody like me. It was a polite way of daring him. Let the king find a man, discreet and wise. Set him over the economic operations of Egypt. And the king said, can we find such a man? Ladies and gentlemen, in one moment, without an interview, he said, I am Pharaoh, and only in the throne will I be greater than you. The Bible says they called him, they gave him treasures. Are we together? They gave him all kinds of names. And the Bible says that they put a signet ring upon his hand, and then he had an opportunity to marry Potiphera, the daughter of the priest of On. That was his blessing. How about David? The young boy, when he killed the lion, there was nobody to clap for him. When he killed the bear, he did not know that it was adding up in the spirit. One day, he was sent to go and feed his brothers. The same way you were sent to come for this program. You did not know you may just be one day left to your manifestation. One day left to your Kairos moment. And the young teenager stands and he's watching the armies of Israel. With all their dexterity and experience, a beast is barking and all of them are in fear. And Joseph said, no, no, this is not Israel. He said, please, can you give me a chance to take on this man? They said, young boy, get out of here. And eventually he went to Saul. And Saul said, whose son are you? That's what I want to know. I want to know the covenant that backs you, that gives you the audacity to stand before him and he began to tell him a story once upon a time I was in the bush and a lion came I toyed a bear came I toyed Saul said all right if you choose we'll give you but take my armory and when he tried it he said no I was not trained with this leave me with my sling what he trained me with in the wilderness is what I will use when I stand before Pharaoh are we together now yes when he stood before Goliath, I meant to say, he stood before Goliath. Goliath was angry. He felt insulted. He said, am I a dog? I will kill this boy, but is this your best Israel? And David stood with confidence. Something always happens to you when you maximize the seasons of training. Mastery erodes fear. You can stand with confidence. Confidence that until your manifestation, only you can understand. And he stood before him. Is someone getting blessed? 
and he said listen Goliath I will not only kill you let me tell you how you will die I will use my sling on you when you fall I will use your own sword and take off your head and give it to the birds you come against me with your bows and your spheres but I come against you in a name Goliath died before he died he died from the confidence of David with one sling do you know I've studied that scripture David comes from the Benjamites they said they were masters at flinging these slings they could divert arrows that you shoot an arrow and they will use a sling to diverge it so don't just think he was anointing mastery mastery I will not waste this opportunity and with one sling he got Goliath down and they began to sing. Women caused him trouble. Saul killed 1,000. David killed 10,000. And David said, I will kill this boy. I don't know where this boy is coming from. Let me prophesy over someone tonight. In the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God. I don't know what seasons you have aborted through carelessness and lack of discernment. But I call upon the God of mercy tonight. May he restore these Kairos moments for you. May he restore these Kairos moments for you. In the name of Jesus. Please sit down. Hmm. Let me give you two principles. You want to maximize Kairos moments. I will just give you two principles and then we'll pray. If you're still with me, say amen. amen. Number one, the first key to maximizing prophetic seasons is to understand and to discern the times. You will need discernment. Discernment is the spiritual faculty of perception. You, you must walk with God to know. Listen, there are many things that happen to you when seasons are changing. Can I give you four of them? Maybe just quickly for your knowledge. Listen to me. Every time you come to the end of a season and another season is opening, these four things happen to you. Number one, an unusual desire to pray. It is a strategy that God puts within your spirit so that you will translate those seasons accurately. Number one, an unusual desire to pray. Number two, an unusual desire to give, to give sacrificially. You will never translate prophetic seasons without God making a strong demand upon your life. Abraham, take now thy son. A season is about to open thine only son whom thou lovest. An unusual desire to pray an unusual desire to give. Are you ready? When seasons are about to change in your life, there are unusual demonic attacks. Because the realm of the spirit, they may not understand, but they see unusual angelic activities. What is going on around the life of this man? And demons are wise enough to know that every time you see angels around a man, around a business, around a church, it's a signification that a season is about to end. When Satan saw unusual angels around Jesus while he was praying and fasting, Satan came and waited at the wilderness patiently. The Bible says that angels came and ministered to him. An unusual desire to pray. An unusual desire to give. An unusual attack. And then number four. Can I tell you what the fourth key is? When a season is about to change, you will not have the passion to be around people again. There will be an unusual drawing. God will now begin to draw you to intense seasons of consecration. You will find out that sometimes, even around your husband or your wife, you don't even want to be around anybody because there are things only, it is, it is between you and God. He wants to open up to you a new blueprint. I'm saying this because with these indicators, someone is now seeing that I am actually ending a season in my life. And starting another one. So this desire to pray. I am always prayerful. But what is this desire to pray? And then this unusual desire to give. And then this demonic attack. It looks like everybody around me is now fighting me. Don't fight them back. You are wasting your time. These are, these are demonic orchestrations to distract your focus. 
Have you noticed that there are times when you spend time in the presence of God, as you come out, everything is offending you. Everybody is offending you. It's a strategy to distract you. Remember, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Mm -mm. Is someone learning? You must learn to discern times. The Bible says he made the lights, the stars, to signify times and seasons. That means there are lights that signify times. I wish I had the time I would have told you stories upon stories in my own life when I knew that certain seasons were coming to an end. Woe betides a man who cannot discern and a new season just comes to pass you and you do not even know like Jacob. Mm -mm. We look to Yahweh, Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh. We look to Yahweh. Forever Yahweh. One of the keys to training your discernment is to commit to the ministry of prayer and the word. Listen, believers, don't waste tonight. I know we will praise. I know we will sing. But it is important for you to know. The Bible says there is, as it were, many voices. And none of them is without signification. Do you know for someone... One of the music ministers will come up here and they will raise a song that everybody will be dancing with. But to you, it is a sign. That song will be that this is the sign. By this sign, it's telling you that a new season is opening up. Most believers in church are not discerning. We just come and jump around and go back and season. And the realm of the spirit is trying to notify you. Woman of God, the mantle is about to start speaking. Do you not know that grace to pray? Shut down on everything and go back for two or three days of fasting and prayer. Lord, what are you saying? Then the blueprint for the ministry comes. What are you saying? Proverbs 18 and verse 1 says, True desire, a man, having separated himself, seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. All wisdom. All wisdom. All wisdom. One instruction will come. I have anointed you this day. Sing my praises to the nations. Ah, that's it. You can come out and say, oh, so this is it. That means the grace is upon my life. Man of God, don't assume it is time for you to start ministry. Don't assume it is time for you to start preaching. Can I tell you, when God wants to lift you next week, Satan will bring you a proposal now. Not every open door is of God. Even the prison has a door. So when a door is open, verify where you are entering. You can, a door can be open and you will enter thinking it's breakthrough. Only to find out you shot yourself in a prison. Can I tell you? The unbecoming of believers in these end times will be assumption and presumption. Never assume there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Lord, should I pursue? Especially when great doors begin to open, don't be in a hurry. My father, you are the one who lifts me. Speak to me. If I do not hear your voice, I'm not taking a step. Some trust in horses and chariots, but we trust in the name of our God. I have potentials to open five and ten branches, you may be saying, in worry as a pastor. But Lord, is it your will? Don't say everybody is doing it. No. Listen, I am praying that by this meeting tonight, that God will plant upon someone the grace. There is something called inquiry prayer. Inquiry prayer is not give me tea, give me bread. We are talking about prayers that connect to Kairos moments. Should I pursue? And if his voice does not come, you stay there. Shabakato sabiata. 
Sometimes, listen, let me challenge you, especially I know that there are lots of worship ministers here. Let me speak to you by the Spirit. Every time you are alone with God, listen very carefully because in his voice will come melodies that one song that comes from the secret place, one song can announce you and give you global visibility beyond your imagination. There are songs that do not die because they did not come from the 